Hi, I'm Tom Long, husband to a master artisan. My wife finds or buys out of style or damaged discarded furniture. She then reimagined what those rejects and remnants could become and makes it so. It kind of makes me wonder what the creator God incarnate in the carpenter's son could do with rejects and remnants. Let's hit the beach and talk about it. I'll admit this week's gospel reading is one that makes me uncomfortable. Why on earth would Jesus refer to anyone as a dog? But that is what happens. I'm, I'm not making this up. A woman came to Jesus and asked for help. No, she was crying out, pleading for help. And what was Jesus' answer? Quote, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs, unquote. Seriously, that's exactly what he said. It's kind of hard for me to wrap my head around Jesus saying something like this, but I'm beginning to learn that when something smells hinky about what the Bible is saying, I probably need to dig a little deeper and see what's going on. Just before this, Jesus had had a nice little discussion with the Pharisees. They caught Jesus messing up. Well, at least he messed up in the eyes of the established religious institution. Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Rather than respond to their gotcha question, Jesus asks them a question. How is it that you have traditions that violate the scriptures? In fact, one of the Ten Commandments, the one that tells us to honor our parents. Just as we have today, there were religious leaders and followers who weren't motivated by honoring God or worshiping Him. This is just the veneer that they used to hold on to power and exploit or abuse others. Jesus quoted the Old Testament saying, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Jesus later explained to his dumbfounded d disciples that the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. So far, I'm reading along through Matthew 15 with a big old amen in my spirit. You tell them, Jesus. But when Jesus called this unnamed woman a dog, it just doesn't line up with how he responded to the thousands of people that interrupted his morning for John the Baptist just a few days earlier. He saw them and had compassion. He spent the day healing their sick. And at day's end, he miraculously fed all of them using only five loaves and two fishes. So what's going on here? Jesus had left the land of his own people and entered into the land of their ancient foes, the Canaanites. And just like the bigots of today, the Jews had some nasty words they employed to denigrate their enemies. Jews often referred to Canaanites in those days as dogs, less than human. They probably visualized stray dogs scrounging through garbage in alleys. But Jesus uses the expression in a more domestic setting. He uses a different word for dogs too, one meaning little dog as in a family pet. Still, it feels repugnant that Jesus' answer gives this desperate woman a place as less than a human family member. Given that the disciples had already asked Jesus to send her away, I wouldn't be surprised if they thought Jesus' language was too sweet. She's a Canaanite dog. She doesn't belong in our house at all. But I suspect that Jesus already knew how this woman was going to respond despite her being dismissed by the disciples and the condescending reply of Jesus. Nevertheless, she persisted. Remember, Jesus had said it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dog. 
just like the Pharisees earlier, she dares to argue with Jesus. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Here it is. The blessings Jesus came to bring to his own people were rejected by some of their most visible leaders. But this Canaanite woman stood ready to receive the bread of life, which they had rejected. Accordingly, Jesus' response to her challenge is 180 degrees from how he had responded to the Pharisees. I imagine Jesus waving his arm with a flourish toward the woman. Looky here, disciples. Then Jesus turns to her and says, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And the Bible said that her daughter was healed at that moment. Nope, not a dog, a woman. Not just any woman, but a woman of great faith. Jesus only says this about one other person. Who? Another Gentile, the centurion, who had asked Jesus to heal his paralyzed servant back in chapter eight. What must the disciples have thought now? They had been concerned that the Pharisees were offended by Jesus. And on top of that, they had wanted to dismiss this woman because she was a Canaanite. Jesus had recently told the most respectable people the disciples knew that they were hypocrites who only talked the talk but failed to walk the walk. Now, this Jesus whom the Pharisees had rejected says to the rejected woman that she is a woman of great faith. Has anyone ever made you feel that you don't deserve a place in the church? We're living in a time when major denominations are in the news because large numbers of their churches want to reject people who are different from themselves. People they think of as less than themselves, even if they don't call them dogs out loud in church. We will always have the hand washing, the dirty hearted Pharisees with us. But keep in mind, that Jesus used this quote from Psalms to describe himself. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. God fulfilled his centuries of promises in Jesus, yet the religious establishment of his time rejected Jesus. If the religious establishment turned its back on Jesus, I think we're in pretty good company, don't you? May we be the kind of rejects whom Jesus will someday say, pointing directly our way, Canaanite woman, centurion man, and you, my child, great is your faith. People, this is what I've been talking about. Jesus is the cornerstone, came for sinners to atone. Though rejected by his own, he became the cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone.